up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Phil and John's VIP. Thank you for joining me um, tonight on Wednesday night uh, for another show. I'm excited, glad to be back. Happy holidays, everybody. Welcome. Um, it is the holiday season, and I'm sure everybody's out and about doing their shopping, whether it's in the street or online. Um, shout out to Miss Rebecca Dupas with the Wine Down with Bex. Thank you for the shout out. You had an amazing show tonight with the poet K Love. I think she's really dope, awesome. I'm looking forward to hearing a lot more about her coming to Baltimore, seeing her open mic set. I'm sure that's going to be dope. I I kind of miss the old school Baltimore poetry. I mean, anybody know anything about poetry in Baltimore? It was fire. So I'm looking forward to um, seeing that. And my brothers from the Gentleman's Corner will be on tonight or just a little bit later um, having their show tonight. So tonight, I'm super excited because this is kind of like a personal reunion of mine. Um, I have a woman who has been a makeup artist in our industry for a long time. Uh, she is brilliant in what she does. She is the consummate professional. But not only that, she's down to earth. She's she's a sweetheart. She's a gem. I mean, uh, we worked together years ago on a show that I did for Intel called Off the Clock. And she made every morning a pleasure to come to work. So I think she's in the room. Jackie just hit request to join. And I'm going to let you go in. Uh, what's up, Bryson, man? What's going on? Thank you for reaching out. To me, I appreciate it. Um, once again, like I said, Jack Jacqueline is uh, an amazing individual. I'm so happy that she said yes, and I'm excited because a lot of things that I want to talk to her about. So I'm going to let her on in a few seconds. Here we go. Let's get this joint started. This party started. Where's she at? Where's she at? Where's she at? Where's she at? There she go. Hi. <laughs> Jacqueline. Hey, Phil John. How are you? Happy I'm holidays. good. I'm over here just like blushing like crazy with everything you're saying about me. Uh, all of it is true. All of it is true. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for back. having me. I'm I'm very excited. Hi, everybody watching. And enjoy me. I got my uh, Club Quarantine family is on. Jared Seltzer just joined us. Hey, Jared. Um, a couple of my brothers from the Gentleman's Corner has popped in. So I just wanted to say thank everybody for coming and joining me because I think, you know, this woman, if you don't know her, I'm sure it's going to be a pleasure for you to meet her because oh. she really, she's probably one of the coolest people I know in the business who's remained uh, a level of consistency of who she is, no matter where she goes or no matter what job she's on. She's, like I said, she's very professional and personable. And I'm so glad that she's here with me tonight. That's so sweet. Thank you so much. I'm so stoked to be here. Thanks for having no, me. Cool. So how's life been? What's been going on? How, how, how's the husband? How's everything? <laughs> well, I was just going to say, Spez says hi. Ah. <laughs> Everything's good. Um, things are good. We're still in, uh, you know, in East Rutherford, uh, New Jersey, and um, uh, just, you know, living life, doing, trying to do things that we haven't done before, and uh, just kind of moving along and trying to kind of uh, go with the times, with these newer times that are ha that have been happening. So, yeah. Has it been, have you felt a, a different, like, has it been like a pullback from uh, working, um, not really more consistently, but just with an abundance of a group of people? Because I know, you know, because of COVID, everything is restricted now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, like many of us, or, or most of us, at least in, in our industry, right, um, we went... Um, many many months in a row without a job <laughs> mm -hmm. so and and that was uh you know that was me too I, uh, and that was also spez too i mean spez does motion graphics for television and at some point they didn't have anything else to give him uh because they weren't shooting so it even yeah. trickled down to the post people yeah. um you know in that in that whole realm but me as a makeup artist i mean if if I'm not physically on set doing a gig, yeah, yeah. you know, like I'm, I was so so grateful that I had um, other businesses in place before that happened, and like my virtual, um, uh, you know, happenings and all that stuff was yeah, yeah. 
I'm very grateful for already having some of that stuff in place because that really helped me when other people didn't have that in place. Right, right. Um, but still, nothing compares to the grind that, you know, we're all in um, on and a normal... Like grind becomes addictive as well. I mean, you so, know that's so, true. Yeah. So when it stops, you even feel it. Mm -hmm. You know, that I'm not, I, I'm not searching like I used to because there's nothing going on to grab. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Exactly. And it's weird, too, because, I mean... <laughs> I was really busy, Phil John. I was really, really busy. I, I mean, there. I, I, I've talked about this um, uh, before, but you know, it's it went from it not being a crazy idea to have me working every single day for weeks at a time without a single day off, no Saturdays off, no Sundays off, no, nothing like that. Um, to literally crickets and nothing. And what am I going to do? And what are we going to do? And, you know, we don't have the nine to five, uh, you know, W2 earner kind of job. That's not something that we've had um, in many years since, since I used to produce, by the way. So I haven't had that kind of stability since I was a producer back in the day. Um, but, so you know, it's, it's getting better now. Back for a minute, though. Yeah. Because I want to know where did it all begin for you and okay. where did it land to where now like you are uh, a, a makeup artist who's all over the place in this business like where, where where did it all begin and what brought you to this choice this decision that you made uh the decision to be a makeup artist you mean yes yeah not only not only a makeup artist but but for you i would say the business of makeup mm, okay so, i see what you're doing yeah 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 so um you know, I went to school for TV production, and that really was, in my mind, what I was going to be doing for my career. Um, and when I graduated from school, I um, was hired at CNBC in the on-air uh, promo kind of department, the on-air like promo slash marketing department, and I was there for um, a short while. Uh, thanks to a, a friend of mine who worked there and she kind of like showed me the ropes and ropes and, and gave gave uh, the hiring people, you know, a little nudge to, to get me in there. And then eventually I went to a smaller production house, creative media agency. Um, and I started there as their production coordinator and then quickly became their in-house video producer. Um, so that's kind of really where I started working uh, with and hiring makeup artists and wardrobe stylists and the whole crew. Like it was me reaching out to them and being the client liaison and, and all of these things. Um, so I kind of would watch the makeup artists from afar. You know, I always adored them so much. They were so sweet and they would walk in with a smile on their face. And then they'd leave at the end of the day with a smile on their face. And meanwhile, my job really only had just started at that point because I was the person not only coordinating the entire shoot, but then sitting with the editors, trying to get, uh, you know, cuts out to the client and, and sitting with the graphics people, you know, the whole the whole thing. Mm -hmm. uh, we wore many we all wore many hats when we worked for that company, <laughs> the, the people that were working there with me. Um, and then, you know, I left there with two of the other women that I worked with and we started our own creative media agency. We had that for a couple of years. Um, and then I, you know, it kind of shit hit the fan. It was 2008. So, I mean, we all know what happened around that time. Uh, the economy shit the bed. <laughs> <laughs> really, and um, I hope your I hope your fan base doesn't mind me cursing. It's all good. <laughs> it is what it is. Um, <laughs> um, but you know, it's it, that's what happened. And and I at that point, I kind of had this feeling that I wanted to reinvent myself. Um, I didn't want. I, I would I would see producers uh, that were ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty years my senior. And I was not into the lifestyle that they that they were showing me that they had. I just I was going to be way too burnt out if I kept staying on that track that I was on. Mm. It just wasn't going to happen for me. I just didn't want it. I didn't want that. So I quit 
Um, I left and I went to makeup school. And then from then on, I was working as a makeup artist. I worked in retail for a short time. And then uh, all, of, all the while um, building up my clientele on the side. And then once I was at the point where I kept on having to call out for my retail jobs because I was booking these gigs, I was like, I got to go. I got to go. I got to do this full time, pursue it completely. And then I, it's been that way ever since. And that was in 2009. Wow. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So we, we met, met, I think, we, in like 2013-ish, only... maybe 12, 12, 13-ish, maybe. Because... We started off the clock in 2011. Yeah, and I wasn't there yet. I, I right. didn't meet Jarrett until um, after Spez and I got married, and that was in November 2012. So it had to have been like maybe early 2013 or something that I was that I got to meet you yeah. guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I was about to say, I'm like, wait a minute, it's 2011. It's been 10 years. I know. You know, but but yes, I forgot there was another makeup artist at that time that was already there. Mm -hmm. and you came on, right? And um, and you totally got it with me, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of things that um, you know, I always say like me and Jared used to have private conversations, and it sometimes used to be me and him, and we say, and when we started drinking, like if there was all <laughs> involved. <laughs> I told I told Jared this. I said, <clears throat> there comes a point when I'm drinking with you where you become like this guru and this truth teller, <laughs> and you, everything is that, that you're unable to say comes out. I know, and I'm just like, yo, he is what, like you know, and so it was kind of <laughs> like it it comes because I I was the, I was the only actor of color in that cast, right? So for me, it was like. You know, it, it after, like it was times like well, you know, we had to be light. We have to be light. You, we have to do this. You know, and I remember uh, once you came on as the makeup artist, I could tell the complete difference, and and immediately that makes me feel even so good. Even when I look back, even when I look back at like the earlier ones, then I see the ones that you did when you came in. Mm -hmm. It was like I look like me. I yeah. don't look like I'm just I'm I'm caked down with all of this foundation and just yeah. like, this craziness and it was and it, it was great and I uh, um I was older than what I was supposed to be. Well, so you I'm already saying. know we've talked about this so many times. But you know what? <laughs> I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell America this because I think they should know because I have I have something I have to say. Okay. Jacqueline will always say, well. How old everyone wouldn't know how old I was, and I was like ten years. They would they thought they were casting a twenty seven year old. Actually, I was ten years old. I was like thirty seven, or thirty six, thirty seven when I got cast. Yeah. So you know, and uh, so when I told, I think you were probably one of the first people I really said said anything to. And she was like, "No, get out of here. No, I'm all up in here every morning. I'm up in here every morning. I know, right?" So Jacqueline was like, "Of course, you know, because I got melanin in my skin. That is that. That's why." But let me tell y'all something. <laughs> Jacqueline Manconi is an Italian American. And everybody, <laughs> let me tell you something. Don't let me get, don't, me, don't tell me about, don't let me get into myths about the Italians. What but is this? What is this going to be? <laughs> he, she, I've seen her, because first time I was buying it, you know, like, she's like, this takes a long time to get ready. Da, da, da. I was buying it. I saw Jacqueline one day without makeup. I literally <laughs> scrolled past. I didn't even know it was her. I <laughs> thought it was a 10-year-old. <laughs> and I was like, and, and now I feel duped. I'm like, all this time. <laughs> you've been saying, you've been saying I look young when in reality, if you take <laughs> all of that off, you look like you're in romper room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, you got you out of the room. <laughs> I'm like, cause she would look. I'm literally. I remember the day I scrolled right past you, and then I went back, and I'm like, wait, <laughs> that's her. You have to be kidding me. Like that's why I'm like, so, it's so funny because here's what I realized is that we 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 don't really see 
what other people see, right? No. Me, I feel like when people saw me, they saw this friendly guy, JP. I feel like I take myself way too seriously. I'm always fighting for people to take me seriously intellectually. Mm -hmm. so I don't get the whole warm, fuzzy thing that people see, right? And okay. you're like, you know, no, it takes work. And I'm just like, no, nah, no, nah, it really doesn't. All you needed was to put the hair in the ponytail and you would be carded. I believe that. I'm telling, I'm telling anybody who's watching, you will be carded. <laughs> so oh, I man. You, but it's a good thing, though, you know. And not only that, but not only are you youthful in the in appearance, but you're also youthful in your spirit. And you always oh, was a pleasure you. to work with. Any any time we did anything, even if it was at, even after Intel and we did the pilot, it mm -hmm. was always a pleasure to come in in the morning and see you. You know, that was such so. a fun pilot to work on too. Oh, can I just say that? Oh my God, that was the best. I wish, I wish it, 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 it was in a position to actually have taken legs and you know mm -hmm. throw legs and move on. And oh, it was absolutely, a great concept, great show. But absolutely, yeah, that would have been amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh man, this is yeah. so funny. But how was it, <laughs> how, how 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 were we? What 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 was our your experience like with us working on off the clock? Oh man, I loved it. First of all, I mean, working with you guys and um I mean what what a team. What a team that Jarrett put together, right? I mean, I feel like this is Jarrett hour because right, like right. We're all, I mean, I'm always just thinking back to, um, first of all, I'm his biggest fan. I really am. I'm just like so pumped for him now doing his thing. It's like, I couldn't be prouder of him really. Um, and just, he really knew how to put a crew together. Um, and not only that, he knew how to cast. I feel like um, it was such a great team all around and everybody was really happy to be there. Yeah. Um, at least that's what it seemed like for me. Yeah. Um, and, and I remember my first day working with you guys and it just already felt like normal. And that doesn't always happen when I walk on a set with, especially if it's a crew and a team that have been together for quite some time. And you guys certainly had been, um, well before I stepped, uh, on set. Um, so I mean, it was it was really a great experience, and to uh, to watch Jarrett work and to watch you guys work. I mean, I feel like our shoot days were so much fun. They were to me. Yeah. Yeah. They were well, to me. Well, have you have you ever been in a position where, you know, I know now that there are when it comes down to like the makeup departments, they are mm -hmm. all. Um, the t they're all titles that I didn't know. Like, so there's like the key makeup artist, and there's mm -hmm. like the key makeup artist, and it, it's it, it's it's a uh, even with the hairstylist. Like, is there always a f without saying too much, but is it always a fight as far as going in when you're not key, when you're working under someone else? Um, in my personal experience, I don't have um. Let me back up. I don't have enough experience at working in an actual team of uh, like a, a in a makeup department. Right. Um, I feel like maybe I've been um, a part of a makeup department once and it was years and years ago. I, I honestly don't even remember it. Okay. Um, but I since I'm non-union there there really isn't. Um, the jobs that I take are, are, aren't typically big ones where there's a department head. If there would be, um, I, I feel like I have such an amazing network of artists, of makeup artists and hairstylists and dual artists that um, I, I feel like if I, were, if I was referred to a gig, it would be with somebody like that, that I, within my network. Right. Or if I am heading a gig, um, I would be bringing on my team. So, you know, the, the people that I choose to work with, really in a nutshell, there are no kind of egos in that way. We all give each other work constantly, um, or at least as much as we can, and we share the wealth in that way. Um, and, you know, we I haven't experienced necessarily that kind of, I don't know, catty-ish-ness oh, yeah. of the industry in general. I really haven't you know, I, luckily, you know, fortunately, I have not experienced that too much. So 
I don't know if that answers your question. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was going to ask you that because I, I, I overhear a lot of things. Yeah. When it comes down to like different departments, you know. Yeah, there's drama. There can be I drama. I know what goes through, yeah. Mm -hmm. there, yeah. there can be drama, but you know, as I mentioned, very fortunately, I like to surround myself um, uh, with people in, in my network that are not like that. And, and they don't they don't even play like that at all. Um, and and I feel like that's actually part of, uh, you know, I do I do mentor. I've been doing more mentoring over the years um, for the business side of makeup artistry and how to get gigs and how to get referrals and all of these things, um, how to be seen more. Um, and I feel like part of that, a huge part of that is being kind to your peers and being authentic and genuine and having and like living with integrity um, because that goes a lot longer than you just beating one person out for one gig and then them hearing that you were shady about something and then they will never refer anything for you again. And great, it's great that you got that one gig, but at the cost of your career potentially. <laughs> right. And I you think know? That, that only people who operate like that, they operate from a mentality of lack. Right? Yes. Mindset yes. black where there's they're, they're, they're fighting because they they feel that there's not enough. Agreed. But we know that there's always enough and the universe is plentiful. There's you got to live in the abundance, right? <laughs> I completely agree. Yeah. I completely agree. Mm -hmm. So are there any, are, would you say, are there any jobs that you would not take? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jobs that don't pay my, my rate. Um, jobs with people that don't that don't value me as a professional, yeah, yeah. Um, or yeah. jobs not even that don't value me as a professional, but jobs that don't value my job as 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 a profession in general. You know, um, it, it, it's um, I'm trying to see how I can word this without coming off a certain way, but uh, it, it, I feel There's only one way to come off. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> um, you know. Being a makeup artist, uh, uh, what I what I personally experience and how how certain things occur to me is that I'm looked at as if it's powder, it's dusting powder, and um, you know that's literally it. Mm -hmm. um, people don't realize the actual work and business savvy um, even before the uh, artistry of it all uh, that goes into mm -hmm. having this profession. Um, and not only that, but, you know, sometimes we have to be uh, therapists a little bit on set with the talent that comes in. I mean, as talent, you know, like if you were to come into my chair and you're in a shit mood, um, you can't go on set like that. Right. So right. I have to have that intuition to be able to either know what to say, if to say anything, or when to shut my mouth right. so that the director can actually get what they need from you as the vessel of talent and the words right. on the paper, right? right. Um, it, it's just, it's, that's, that's my job. That's my, that's my unwritten job to figure yeah. out if I can help the director get what they need out of you, the talent. Um, and that's just like, and that's not a, thought yeah, of. That's a certain gift you have. Yeah. You and know? I just yeah. feel like so many makeup artists have that and hairstylists as well. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, but that's not something that anybody thinks about because, you know, everybody just says, okay, you know, oh, they're fine. Grab, put, throw some powder yeah. on them. It's a simple job. It's like, if it was a simple job, you wouldn't need me. Right. What do you mean? <laughs> I've, 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 I've been on sets where I've seen some PAs give, real, give um, the hair and makeup people a really hard time. Yeah. yeah. It, it's like, like, we're not, like, we're there just taking our time, trying to <laughs> <Right>. make the <laughs> schedule late. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. What? It's my worst nightmare. <laughs> right. And, and, and you know, it, it, people people don't understand, like, you know, even, like I said, for me as talent, coming in, seeing you mm -hmm. was always, um, was always like my calm, you know? Oh, that's very sweet. Especially, yeah. especially because, they, they, you know, 
there could have been several things that happened prior to us getting there. Yeah. So when I got there, they would be like, okay, I got my call. Sometimes we didn't have to talk the time for coffee. Yeah, you know, exactly. Like, you know, okay, we got a meeting at 8.30. We got to be on set. We got to start. We got to start back then. We were doing teleprompter stuff. Remember all of the breakouts and stuff we had to do? Yeah. Start that by 9 o'clock. So, you know, just to have someone to speak to you like you're a human being and not cat <laughs> helps. Yeah. Or, by the way, not speak to you at all. Yeah. If that's what you need. If that, absolutely. If, if that's the vibe and you're, like, needing to... You're like reading your lines and, um, you know, I, you, I can f feel that you're in the zone or in a zone that I shouldn't be like impressing myself upon. <laughs> right. Um, that's yeah. all part of the job. And, and that's kind of, um, I feel like sometimes people don't take my job seriously. Um, but it's kind of like we're, we're the first line of defense in the production's day. Absolutely. So, you know, it's it's not not important, right? You get us fresh <laughs> at six, seven a.m. <laughs> really? So what 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 are some of pro what are some of the projects that stand out as highlights to you, and why? Okay, well, first of all, for sure, our gigs together, okay. one hundred percent, all of my Jarrett gigs, um, because that was just so much fun. It felt like. I don't know, felt like camp, kind of. Yeah. It just like felt fun <laughs> to me. It felt like I was hanging with my buddies. Um, and, uh, the job that I've been on for the last four years, I, I, uh, I'm the makeup artist um, for a show called True Conviction on the ID Network. And I get to work with the loveliest people and they're so talented and they take me across the country. Um, I was just with them last week in Texas and next week I'm going to Florida with them. Um, just an amazing crew. Uh, love, love them. And then really any other job that I get to work with my friends. So like, um, I don't know if she's still on here. Ivy, Ivy Ray all day. She's yeah, a I, very, I yeah, she's a very good friend of mine. And, um, you know, any job that I can work with her or, um, uh, you know, my friend Melissa or Margina or like literally anybody that I just love to pieces so much is that's a great day. Regardless of the gig, that's a great day. And also because I get that means I'm paying my friends too. I'm getting them paid. Right. And that's always good. Yeah. Or they're getting me paid if I'm on a job of theirs. Um, and it's just like that reciprocal kind of like we're taking it, take care of each other um, atmosphere. And I really, I really love that. Well, what, what what words would you give to someone who's saying, you know what, I'm 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 a makeup artist, you know, I'm thinking about doing work on sets. Uh -huh. You know, what advice would you give to them, and what do you, what 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 where what would they have to do? How would they start? Where would they mm -hmm. go? Yeah, that's yeah, a great. Because you know, in this industry, a lot of what we do is based on relationships. Oh, I feel like everything is. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so I mean, how do you? How would you get started? How would you say where where would I go? Where, how, where would I look? Um, such a such a good question. I mean, right now we've been living in a time <laughs> the last I would say ten years or so where it is getting, in my opinion, easier and easier and easier to connect with um with people you're trying to network with. Uh, via social media. So I know for me, when I first started, of course, social media was around, but it was nothing like it is now or even in the last seven years. Yeah. Um, so the businesswoman in me says, network your little ass off and befriend um, the people that are in your community that are doing what you want to be doing. Um, or if you don't live in a community, like if you're like in the middle of, you know, a, a, an area, a rural area, then they, there really aren't any shoots around you. Mm -hmm. Still try and, um, and, and really hone your craft with friends and, and do as many faces as you possibly can. Practice, practice, practice. Doing makeup on yourself is great, but won't help you at all. You want to make sure that you're doing other people's faces. All skin tones. You want to make sure that you have makeup for all skin tones. If you just have three shades, you're doing it wrong, right? Um, and then also, you know, just keep it real and know that if you're living in a non, 
um, you know, production heavy area, you may, if this is what you want, need to relocate. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but other than that, uh, just look, seek out people on social media, seek out people on Instagram, seek me out. I don't care. Go ahead. <laughs> seek me out. <laughs> um, and, and follow people and, um, interact with them in the comments and, um, you know, comment on their stuff, react to it, uh, seek out, um, makeup artistry, private groups on Facebook. Um, and just, you know, see somebody, look at somebody and research them and, and look at their career. And if that's something that is enticing to you and, and interests you, um, try to emulate what they did to get to where they are. Right. And read a ton of business books. A ton, do not stop reading business books. I personally can't, I, I, I like can't stand sitting still and physically reading. So I do audio books all the time. So mm -hmm. I'm constantly just like ramming through audio books about business. And I have been for many, 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 many years. Right. Um, and that I feel is, that'll just get, okay. give you yeah. a whole leg up. What we do is a business. At, we're all each okay. our individual businesses. Absolutely. Yeah. We are the product. Absolutely. Exactly. And the product, we don't give away product for free. Mm, no. <laughs> right. Oh, we do right. not. <laughs> Right? I can't pay my too. bills with your exposure and pats on the back. Thank you very much. That's not even necessary anymore because of social media. Okay. We have all we could provide if we really want to. We could provide our own exposure. We don't need yeah to do yeah. something for you for free for exposure. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Please. Please. You know. Ridiculous. But let me ask you. So let me ask you another question. Are you yeah. are you willing? Are you? You have any aspirations to do any big budget major? motion picture projects? Um, honestly, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I certainly am, am I, I mean, again, I'm not union, so I don't have access to those types of jobs. Um, but is that an aspiration? I, I don't think so. I don't think so, Phil John. I don't think so. Um, if you had asked me that 10 years ago, maybe I would have, you know, answered you differently. Okay. Um, but honestly, I, I really love the television show that I've been working on. Um, and I like working on just corporate gigs. They pay a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. Not at, listen, not every makeup artistry job um, means blockbuster movie. It doesn't. Right. Uh, there are, which by the way, I didn't know this growing up. Like I didn't even think, I didn't even consider makeup artistry as a career. Not that I didn't think it was, I just didn't think about it. It wasn't, it didn't even occur to me that that was something that existed um, until I knew. <laughs> um, but, you know, I certainly didn't know that corporations like pharmaceutical companies and whatever um, needed to hire makeup artists for headshots or for um, their internal uh, sales training to the field, to the sales force videos, um, or any, I had no idea that that existed until I knew that it existed. Yeah. So, I mean, and then, then, then there's bridal on top of it all, which is a huge, tremendous industry yeah. and huge money maker. So there are so many different avenues to go in. And then personal consulting, which I also do when custom blending makeup and selling, um, you know, I retail different kinds of products and stuff that, yeah. you know, that's a completely different section of makeup artistry should you choose to get involved in that. Yeah. Um, there are just so many things to do. <laughs> You're like a mobile mat company, really. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Right. Well, you just, what do you need? I've got right. a solution you, you for you. You got it. You got it. I, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people don't understand that they have um, alternatives or they have other options. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, it's like once you get into like union stuff, you play in this whole game of of trying to hold on to what is really slipping through your fingers because of Internet influencers and and um, other things that you can do without having to go through 
all the red tape that you would have to with the union stuff. Yeah, I honestly, I don't really have that much knowledge about unions um, other than what a few of my colleagues have shared with me because I haven't looked too much into it. Well, but what they um, shared, you were like, mm, no. I'm yeah, I, I'm just, <laughs> I just, you know, it's just, I'm not, um, it's just not something that I'm concentrating on right now. I mean, maybe in the future, I, who, who knows? Phil John, who knows? Right, right. You know, who, who knows? I also started taking photography classes and bought a camera this summer. So who knows where this will take me? <laughs> have you ever, have, have you ever had any talent that you, that you say that I don't, I wouldn't, I probably would want to work with them again. Or no. work on that show again. No, I have not. I have not. Um, I don't think. I don't think. I don't think I remember having having experience like that. What I like about like all the things that you're saying to me is that, and what, what I get, and correct me if I'm wrong, because this is what I'm getting. Yeah. What you're telling me is that you really like having control over, like total autonomy over how you move as an artist. I do. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Even when it, you know, it. it it seems like maybe I don't have all of the control sometimes. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, I have the control over which jobs I accept or decline. I have control over asking all the questions that I need to ask the producer before saying yes or no to a gig. Um, I have control over saying yes to a gig. And then if um, I am not being treated fairly or if I'm being if there's some sort of abuse you know on set I have full control over getting the hell out of there yeah. um and I'm not you know maybe if you had asked me you know seven to ten years ago would I ever walk off set I would have said oh my god absolutely not right. but guess right. what in in these days in these times right. I'm not I'm not messing around with 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 my value with the value of my peers, the value of my coworkers, um, it's just not happening. Right. So yeah, I would. <laughs> Especially now, because a lot of things, this, this kind of the sad part about it is a lot of things that are coming to light now are things that have been happening for years. Uh, yes. You know, in these kind of situations. Mm -hmm. And um, to, to, to women and men alike. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Um, and I think that now people are just saying, I'm not going to, stand for it anymore like no it's just not happening mm -mm. no i i you know I, I used to be very much a pushover and um even though you know i uh some people may know me as having a more bubbly personality um and all of that and smiley and whatever but i i have learned over the years um to become more assertive in my uh my body language and my language language. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's, um, especially when people tend to not take your job seriously, you kind of have to learn to do that um, and learn to speak like a business person and a business owner uh, so that people can hear the words that are coming out of your mouth and understand that you're not a flaky, artsy fartsy idiot you're an actual person, human being yeah. with, with a brain who studies business and understands what they're trying to pull over. <laughs> People will want the world for nothing. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, that's true. Mm -hmm. And then that's, that, it always blows my mind. I'm like, mm -hmm. what? you know, I, I, I no longer do favors. Right. No, it's not happening. No. Mm -mm. Not happening. No, I'm too old for this. I can't do I can't do P S E and G won't 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 do me a solid. I can't <laughs> Yeah, my la my landlord isn't uh isn't taking high fives this month. So <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Absolutely. So listen, <clears throat> I have my five questions I ask every guest. Okay. Up. I'm nervous. Here we go. And you can feel free to answer them any way you like. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this. What is it what is it that you know now about the industry as opposed to what you didn't know about the industry when you first started? So um, what is it that you thought about it before you entered that you mm -hmm. now know mm -hmm. didn't know before? Yes. Um, I know that, well, I've kind of always known that, that fake it till you make it is not a thing. 
for for my for my position anyway i can't really speak to anybody else's um because you know if you say you can do something but then you can't um and you can't learn it in time for whatever the thing is uh, it's your fault and you can ruin an entire day and be wasting tens of thousands of dollars of somebody's money uh, for reshoots, right? Um, and then you tarnish your personality. But something, uh, something that I have, de something that I didn't know that I know now, maybe, you know what? I, th I don't think I knew exactly how powerful a strong referral network within the makeup artistry family would be when I first started. I knew that referrals were always the best type of word of mouth, um, the best type of advertising. Um, but I, I, maybe I didn't consider those referrals would come from within my own job title, other makeup artists. Um, maybe instead I, I assumed it would go from producer to producer to producer instead. Yeah. Um, and it does do that. But the referrals in your own industry, your own job uh, description are paramount. That is huge. Don't that's, sleep on those referrals. <laughs> that's true. Mm -hmm. That's so important. I mean, one year... Um, one year I referred over $20,000 worth of work to other artists because I couldn't take those jobs because I was already booked. Wow. So just to give you an idea, I mean, that was probably in 2016-ish around there. Right. But just to give you an idea, like these are the kind of gigs that people want to give away to their trusted and respected network because they right. know that, um, their their clients are going to be taken care of in in their absence yeah you yeah. know that's powerful I like yeah that. totally powerful yeah so what what advice would you give your 19 year old self <laughs> um stick with your general business minor <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, and, um, sa save more money and, um, let's see. Oh, uh, okay. This is it. This is actually the thing right here. S uh, start figuring out multiple streams of income yes. as soon as possible. I didn't learn that lesson until nine years ago yeah mm -hmm. i agree, I agree. Mm -hmm. multiple streams of income that's it that's that all of the most all the wealthiest people in the world have multiple streams of income totally and investing i just I, they, absolutely yeah. yep that's don't cool. sleep on it don't wait until you're 30 don't don't wait start as soon as you have a dollar bill to your name start doing something reading business books listening to business books i cannot stress that enough it is what is a business. I remember there was an R&B singer who told me years ago, she said, this business is 98, 98, 2% talent, 98% business. Truth. That is the truth. Yeah. That is absolutely the truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so what feeds your spirit? Hmm. Um, uh, hanging out with my husband who I adore. Um, and my family and my friends. I mean, it's it's been a really rough couple of years as far as hanging out with people goes. Um, I haven't really done much of that at all. And I absolutely have felt the effects of that. What do you want your legacy to be? <clears throat> um, that's a question. Uh, I've never really thought about it, but maybe... Um, maybe just encouraging people or, or promoting the idea of really living with integrity um, in whatever you do and being genuine and authentic because there's a lot of drama and fakers out there. And, um, you know, I've been scammed a couple times by people who I thought were friends and they were certainly not. And it almost cost me a reputation. Mm-hmm. 
Um, so just uh, living with integrity and um, being your authentic and true self and doing more of what you want also, by the way, and, and less of um, what you think people want you to do. Be more, be true to you. That's what I would tell people as far as like, I, I'm, we're not having children. So like there as a legacy in that respect, we don't have anything no, going on that way. But like, as far I, as what people when I might say legacy, I mean, legacy is part <laughs> of your mark on your world. And I ask that question because I always believe that, you know, we're here to do something. Mm -hmm. you know? I always, I always say I think that Christians sometimes get it wrong. People feel like, you know, I don't believe. I think that one thing that Christ was trying to teach us is not so much, it's not so much how you came, which is why he was born in a manger, right? It's about what we do while we're alive, the impact that we have while we're here. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he died, the transcending of death is our impact on the world once we're gone. Well, I mean, for, so if that's the case, then I would say to hopefully inspire people to um, stay true to themselves and, and just in general live with integrity. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. yeah. That's what I try to do. So. Awesome. So last question. Okay. What are you, what are you grateful for? Um, I'm grateful for a lot of things. I'm, I'm grateful for what I have and what I don't have. Um, and I'm really grateful for, um, you know, the, the, the normal things like my family, my friends, all, all of this. Um, and just like living right now, just <laughs> um, breathing on your own accord. Yeah, really. I mean, the, I mean, there are just so many things. There, there are so many things to be grateful for. You know, definitely. Mm -hmm. Just, just. I, I think what uh, not only twenty twenty, but just the times that we're living in now, uh, being able to be healthy. Yes. Is a is is something you'd be grateful for. Absolutely. The fact that you can inhale and exhale without being on a ventilator mm -hmm. is something to be grateful for. So, so all wild, the things yeah. that we take for granted, man, you know, uh, all those things is is something to be grateful for. Yeah, I agree. So I'm grateful that to have you as part of my circle. I am so, I, the same. I'm so grateful to have you as part of my circle. I hope we can hang soon. Yeah, because you know I'm I, I'm 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 a Jersey kid now. Wait, yeah. where are you living? Bayonne. You're in Bayonne. Oh my God, you're so close. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, did I know this? I don't even remember. I, I'm, I'm the I, worst I'm memory. I'm do, I moved. I moved out of New York during the pandemic. So. Oh, so no, maybe I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good I, for I, you. Yeah, man, and I, I, it was the best move I made ever made. I love it out here. Good. Um, life is so different on this side of the Hudson. Man, we dragged you over, huh? We dragged you uh, over to the dark to side. The point, to the point where I don't want to go to Manhattan anymore. Like, I know. I'm telling you. Not, you know. I'm like, I, I go into the city, like, and then I come back, I'm like, whoo, you know, it's like, it's, it's like a, lot. A, 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 like a washing machine, it was sped out. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. energy is so different on this side of the Hudson. Yeah, yeah, I mean, people give us a lot of crap for living in Jersey, but I have to tell you, I, I like it. <laughs> I always yeah. have. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I, I like, uh, well, you guys, you guys are still over there by the train, right? Rutherford. We're in a different place than what what you would remember, but it's okay. still right, it's still in that area, yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Nice, man. I, I look forward to seeing you guys soon. Hell yeah. That would be dope, you know. I can't wait to tell Spez. He's going to be so happy. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm looking. I'm I'm down, man, because I I'm not too far. I'm like, like like Bayonne, you know, Bayonne, Jersey City, Hoboken. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly. Yeah, awesome. So, so good, you know, so you guys, please don't be strangers at all. Absolutely. Oh my god, I'm st I'm I'm stoked, and we could we should like bum rush Jared's uh, bagel shop. I'm down with that. I'm down to do that. Let's just I'll show up one day, not tell him. I know he's not watching anymore, oh, so let's no, just no. We'll plan a day. No, he, we'll just he, show he, up. He, he, before we started, he got on. He said, listen, love you. Have a great show. I'm going to bed. I got to be up at 4 a.m. 
He doesn't well, even not. know. We're coming to get him. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be like, that hi. I'll come out to Rutherford, meet up with you guys, and we can roll out there. That would be Oh, my God. That would be amazing. Definitely. Thank you so much. Tell Thank you. Love. Thank you again. I wish you nothing but success and happiness in the in 2022. And we'll see each other again, too. Right back at all of that, right back at you. Thank you so all much right. for having me. Thanks for watching, Thank you. you guys. Thank you.